Good afternoon, everybody. Last match of the afternoon. Quarter final action, and what a lineup. It doesn't get any better than this for pool fans. Mr. Mellin going up against the fastest player at Ultimate Pool, Sean Chipperfield. I'm joined for this one. 50 minutes of action, if we get that far. By Kent's finest, Adam Bazoo. Oh, I'll take that. I'll take Kent's finest. <laughs> This is going to be a good game, isn't it? It's a very I've small county, I've heard. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no other good players from it. Really. <laughs> Can't think of one off the top of my no, mind, actually. No, no, not at all, no. no. There's not many. <laughs> I feel like Chris might be a bit offended by you saying Sean's the fastest player. In <laughs> well, yeah, Chris can play very quick, but you have to yeah. look at his shot time. You'll do well to beat Sean Chipperfield. Yeah. From, from approaching the table to playing the shot, he's... In my opinion, yeah. by far the quickest. He yeah, doesn't. Man, he doesn't queue up for starters. Yeah, it does it. <laughs> Feathering is overrated. Yeah, I wonder because Chris has got such a long backswing. If he didn't have that long backswing, he probably would be that <laughs> quick as well. Chris, definitely the most aesthetically pleasing player. Oh. Are you even a pool fan if you don't like watching Chris play? No, I don't think you are. Blockbuster lineup for a place to face the winner of Mark Fleming and Mark Salby currently going on on the middle table. Salby an overwhelming favour at the moment to take this tournament down. Yeah. And I saw yeah, odds of seven to four, which, in my opinion, is just horrifically short. Not disrespectful because they're only a reflection of money being placed, but yeah. When you look at the players left in, yeah, that I think that's yeah, it's a bit bonkers. But he yeah. is playing very well. I think you'd be hard pressed to see past Stevie Dempsey, in my opinion, as being the favourite, having made two finals already. Yeah, and it, he looked like he played well in that game just now. He always looks like he plays very well. That's true. Yeah. Man, well and truly beat, in form. To beat Waddingham like that as well shows you're playing well. Late last night, Chris got underway against Ian Melly. I Ian Ellie. Ian Melly. <laughs> Ian Ellie in a very high standard match. I think there was only two, possibly three mistakes in that match. That includes dry breaks. Very high standard indeed. Same score against Liam White. And then beat Jimmy Kearney in the last 16 at seven frames to two. Not come quite far enough. Could have done with a couple of extra rolls, but can't see it causing any problems. Smooth as you like. So I feel like just go for power. Obviously, you want to hit it fairly close. Well, what he is doing, uh, not a great example yeah. of it, given that he's gone <laughs> yeah. into the centre pocket, though, but he is placing his hand on the table. Yeah. And that does give an extra layer of sort of control. Yeah. But straight into the not there, centre though. pocket. And even at this early stage in this match, the last thing you want to do is be going to break a serve yeah. down to Chris because he's looked extremely sharp at yeah. this week's event. I do I do always wonder with the break because people normally use the bridge where they loop the finger over the cue and no one ever really plays a shot like that. Yeah, it seen doesn't it. normally happen. I've seen it <laughs> quite a lot. I always think it's quite a hard way to control. It's, I don't think it's the best bridge. I think it's there's certain shots where yeah. the loop bridge comes in very useful. Yeah. If you if you're playing a shot up the rail and you sort of just hang you know yeah. your hand your hand's just got to hang yeah. you know half on the table half off the bed you know yeah. and uh, the loop can be the steadiest way of sort of holding that cue in yeah. position. But as you say, it's not something you see a lot of, is it? Is it? And unless you're like the perfect distance away from the cushion, it's the only time you ever use it is the break really because even, even sometimes when you're not a great distance away from the cushion it sort of gets in the way of your vision of the cue ball when you're down in the shot a 
Very classy, the way he goes about his business, yeah. Chris Mellon. He plays them little stun shots, just lovely with his long backswing. He just hits it so soft. Yeah, it's so, it so difficult, isn't it? Because he really yeah. is. It's yeah. so it much more. It looks very easy, <laughs> the way he does it. So much more of a touch shot when you bring yeah. that cue right back to your big yeah. hand. There's also a lot more that can go wrong when you're uh, putting it back that far. You've got so much more time to twitch or just move it slightly offline. It's a lot more effort. Overdone this as well, but shouldn't cause a problem. It, can he avoid the yellow on the left hand side, Adam? I think so, yeah. I think he can just stun it straight across. He might be able to hold it on the sort of top side of the table as we look at it now. Okay, out of right hand side he's playing with. He might have to come back across. Yeah. Near jaw, but no danger. And he has punished the Sean Chipperfield in off. I do believe I've never been, but China being the king of humidity. Yeah. Over there, the stories I've heard has been horrendous. He will be disappointed where the cue ball landed, but he was quite fortunate not to send the cue ball into the centre pocket there. Sometime type of containing shot, possibly off the yellow on the left hand side and bring the cue ball back down to the bottom of the table, Adam. Does Chris do containing shots? I don't know. Well I, I can't see an <laughs> attacking option. <laughs> yeah. He might be able to I cut a I yellow to the right centre. I think he was looking at the double, the double. On this yellow on the left hand side. Well it's hard to tell whether it goes from here. Oh he's got it. There's your answer. Yeah. And we are off again. How many players do you think would have played that straight away? Cause it's I don't it think there's many. I mean, if you don't get that double, it's end of three. I don't think there's many. I really think there's an, there's an argument to saying the containing shot wasn't that easy. You'd have had to get it. You'd have had to get it perfect. This is why we love watching him, though. Mapping out the rest of the table. Just wondering if he gets rid of this yellow below the black now, even though he's perfect. It looks to be perfect on one of the yellows to the top pockets. Wow. Well, <laughs> you saw the shake of the head. Chris knows that probably shouldn't have dropped, but played at a perfect dead weight pace. Gave it every chance. Needs to cheat the pocket again, I reckon, here. Looks that way, yeah. Just gonna roll too far, but should be okay. Yeah. It's either going to roll too far or roll too short, really. But uh, as long as he doesn't move himself too straight on this top yellow, he can get down the table. Would you be happy here? Yeah, I think so. I think he just plays this with a tracer left hand side and comes down. Ooh. Well, he played it with a touch more than a trace, Adam, and he will be very upset with the result because yeah. that was a big opportunity to go three ahead. It's one of them where he's not even really got the white ball correctly. He's just, I think he's just sort of quit on the shot. Just watch the 
Sean in open play, it's just sort of like one feather back. Point and shoot, you would say, yeah. and I do not mean that disrespectfully. No. From the 2012 world champ. Well, one thing you can definitely say is it doesn't overcomplicate things. Yeah, definitely not. He's going to have a chance to level things up when he thought he could have been 3 nil down in this quarter-final. It doesn't waste any time whatsoever, which is what we've come to expect. We'll need a better break than his last one, Adam. And that will do. He's not happy with the contact. You saw his facial expression afterwards, but at first glance, didn't look too bad here, Adam. Bye. So there's an argument for either cover. Probably reds, I think you'd favour. Wow, well, now we take a second look. Yeah. I mean, there is an argument for both colour sets, like you said. You couldn't have a look at that yellow near yeah. the left centre, but yeah, I that, think I'm with you, Adam. That, yeah, that will put reds favourite, I think. It just shows how quickly things can change in a match. Yeah. That mistake from Chris Mellon has is looking like it could cost him two frames. Just wondering about the black. If that goes past the yellow to the bottom right. Yes, it does. And then well, it's fine. I yeah. mean, I'm, I can be as sure as I can be as sure, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that passes. Yeah, that's... Maybe happens. not quite a full pocket, but he's got yeah. a couple of balls around the eight ball to get perfect position on it. Just stopped in his tracks a little bit. Maybe he expected a bit of a bigger bounce, but this angle's absolutely perfect for him. Maybe it goes to the right middle. just see how he sees it I mean he's come round to have a look at playing it into the same pocket but doesn't want to go too far and because yeah. of that ended yeah, up a little bit, bit too short yeah now if his natural angle isn't into the middle pocket which I don't think it is just wonder if he's going to flick the yellow on the cushion and then magnificent no, great stuff I sorry Guam I think that that must have been horrible in that heat the Challenger Series, which is underway as well, two uh, two events over the forthcoming days, and they're all played in the on the outer tables. And Ultimate Pool decided that they were going to relax the dress code a little bit, and you're allowed to wear shorts, I believe. Yeah, and uh, just a great decision because yeah. I'm sure you, as many other pool players, have been in events where it hasn't been allowed, and it kind of ruins yeah. the feel, doesn't it? Yeah, the little, enjoyment. Yeah, a little bit. I think, like everyone, when you when you get a bit hot and bothered, it doesn't make everyone's mood better, and that doesn't lead to the best pull. Absolutely I not. But you've got to have your trousers on to be in this arena. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> you've got a little bit more space in this arena. I think so. Probably a little bit cooler. It's never nice underneath them lights, so they're always a bit hotter than the lights uh, on the outside tables. something to think about here Adam yeah, playing this off the yellow this. I think he's nudged it far enough and if he's on the red to the opposite corner which that camera angle shows as he is not a very good shot indeed yeah that's very good as long as the yellow's cleared out of the way which it looks oh. oh now usually 
you would say something along the lines as has he rushed it yeah because it looks so <laughs> quick that, but because it's short yeah even for Sean it looks like a slightly quick one it looked like the back swing was a little bit shorter than it normally would be he is I mean really he, suffering he never there. really feathers so it's not a lack of feathers I think he just didn't pull the cue back as far as normal Relatively speaking, it shouldn't have too much of an effect on the outcome of this match. This has come from a Chris Melling break. So the chance getting away from Sean doesn't have the as big a degree of magnitude as it would do as it, if it was on his break. This yellow does pass this red, but it does look quite tight. Just wondering, I think he's got to play on this one to the middle. Yeah, and he's made um, sure he's got yeah. top side. In fact, he's got I quite a bit more angle than he would have liked, so just needs to kill this in. The kind of shots that he just seems to love, Chris. Yeah. Miller. Which I feel. Like it's a bit weird when you've got the long back swing that he's got. It's probably harder to time that, but it's he's just, just really good at it. <laughs> it's just talent. Yeah. I wonder if he was ever coached or anything. Do you know if he was coached? Or uh, I, I don't. I know he did play from quite a young age. Yeah. A little table, usual story. And Just raw talent and a yeah. an eagerness to learn, which is yeah. something that you don't always see in the younger generation. No, people Pro forget that. Probably know, not in these days, anyway. Yeah, a lot of you yeah. pool players from the age of you know, twelve, thirteen, and beyond, basically have lived on a pool table for yeah. periods of your life. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. Dedicated an awful lot of time yeah. just through sheer love and passion for the game as we yeah. watch Sean Chipperfield make the first mistake in open play in this match. I would imagine pretty much every pro at some point has gone for a period where they spent most of their life on a pool table. Well, not most of it, but a good portion of it. <laughs> Hitting the yellow is no problem here for Sean Chipperfield, but just look what he's leaving. So he's trying to find another option where he may have a chance of potting a yellow. Doesn't want Chris Mellon to go 40 ahead with a break. That would be a big foothold for sure. And he is going to give Chris a chance to do just that. As the chance evaporates for Chippy. couple of other games going on at the minute obviously we just watched Stevie Dempsey advance through to the semi-final he was the first one through in a very entertaining match against Craig Waddingham Eddie Barker is currently 2-0 down to our fan dad both of them players looking for a maiden semi-final an ultimate pool event on the professional series Mark Selby after starting around the same time as this match, I believe, is 5 0 up against Mark Fleming. And obviously, this game currently sat at 3 2. And I will just mention once more that the winner of this game will play the winner of Mark Selby and Mark Fleming. And what a prospect we have in store there, Adam. Yeah, I mean, if either one of these two against Selby, absolutely, I feel, I feel like a lot of the Q Sport 
uh, purist fans maybe would go for would want Melling versus Selby. I, I actually want. I would actually prefer to see Chipperfield. Yeah. Selby, but I mean, we're only saying Selby now because he's five 0 up. That game not dead yet. Oh yeah. Mark Fleming and his fans will be still supporting and have some hope, but the way Mark Selby's going through the field at the minute, it's not doing the reputation yeah. of pool players any favours. Yeah. I mean, you say that. I, d I don't think he can play this well at Paul without having put a little bit of effort in beforehand. I imagine, I don't know whether he'll say he has or not, but to have the touch of this table. Wow. Well, Chris is. I, I mean, I, I'm kind of with him there. Can we. It, yeah, it really did, didn't it? I don't know if it hit a chalk mark, but it just seemed to turn right. Let's take another look. Gets the hit. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I have never seen that before at an event. Here we go. Well, I don't know what's happened here. Because the eight ball's still on the table, but Chris just making a point that they're, yeah. we're definitely rolling away. And Well, the frame's been given... Still no. in good spirits, and we're ready to restart as once again in this match that right centre pocket is yeah. threatening every single break from both players. But yeah. luckily for Sean, he's going to get a chance. It might have hurt if Chris had to put a ball off that break after White running around the middle pocket. <laughs> you couldn't get too that much closer, yeah, could no. you? <laughs> oh, he's opted for the red balls. The red on the braking line looks like the biggest problem yeah, to solve for sure. Even if it goes to the top right, hard to tell at the moment. Yeah. There you go. I think it does pass Adam. Great spot. So every red does have a home, but it's a little bit delicate. A lot of care needs to be taken with this cue ball. Yeah, He's going to be. I'm just wondering here if you roll through for the red down the bottom, get that out of the way. Or whether you leave that till last now. Well, he looks very straight on this one to the centre. Yeah. I was just wondering if he's going to play on this one down the bottom. But he might well have played on it there. There we go. So, is he looking to screw up the left-hand side of the table? Is that a possibility? Well, he's caught the yellow on the way through. Hmm. So he's not as far up the table as he would have liked, I but... Know, I don't know how well he can hold this. Can he clip this in and use the yellow as a buffer? He has done. Has oh, he found the gap? the gap? I think he has. He's down quickly. Needs this to pull up, though. Oh, I think he's OK, wow. Adam. <laughs> wow. Just wow. What a fantastic finish <laughs> by Sean Chipperfield. You, you don't really have time to commentate on Chipperfield. I mean... <laughs> This time, makes a perfect contact. Without being kicked, that white was going to stop absolutely dead in the centre of the table, pretty much. So, best break of the match so far. Yeah, he's hit that in the absolute centre there. can't call it can you this game at the moment no. I mean if you were looking at the table in Sean Chipperfield's last finish you would say he was odds against oh, at virtually every perfect, shot of getting out Yeah. but this is the way he plays and it's what makes him so good to watch yeah. a world class player that does it at such a speed that it's been fun. he's just played there is perfect it's fantastic yeah. stuff from both players at the minute it's been very entertaining Anybody would have thought, Adam, we were in the last 10 minutes the way these two were going at it. Yeah. I just wonder what these uh, two players think about playing each other. Because 
you'd sort of regard them as two of the best to watch. And what? you wonder if there's like a little bit of sort yeah. of ego involved yeah, in I'm wanting to be to prove that they're the best to watch. More impressive than the other. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know how well you know both players. I've spent a bit of time with both of them. Yeah. and I've got to be honest, I think both of them will have the same sort of opinion and it just won't matter. No. It really yeah. doesn't. I don't think it. Maybe it does, but they wouldn't admit yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, as is his opposition. But yeah. You get the feeling that either of these two could... It's wow, well, yet nice. again, that centre pocket for Chris Mellon. Yeah, I was going to say is... You get the feeling that either of these could get a broom handle, yeah, file it down and put a tip on, and still yeah. play at a decent level. Just wondering, I think Christmas. How has he done? Look at this! Three times it nearly yeah. went into the centre. A little pocket. bit of right hand side, I think, going into that break every time. Whether that's an alignment issue or a cue action issue, just not quite catching yeah. that front yeah. ball. As he wished, but yeah. it, it won't make we any difference here. I mean, he's still got a good opportunity. He's got a shot to play to get on that eight ball, though. Plenty of room around it, but this obvious yeah. pocket being blocked. I think the yellow's nearest to blue spot is a little bit tricky. It looks well in the open, but I'm not sure if it goes past the bottom yellow. And then it's how you get onto it to get rid of it. Played for it now, I think. I think it's just overrun it. Yeah, I think he was playing for that yellow then. Because if he got straight on it to the middle, then he could have taken the one to the top right and then left this one at the bottom right to just run around the black. I think he was still able to cut this yellow he's so close to, but no control yeah. over the cue yeah, ball. So taking this one and using a red as a buffer. I feel like he wanted to leave it till last as well just to get on the black. It seems like the obvious ball to get on the black. It must go past this yellow. He flirted with the centre pocket not once, not twice, but three times. Lost position just the once in the finish. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Sean breaking the better of the two at the minute. Has he got his reward? Yes, he has. What a big ball that could be. Look at Chris's face. That kind of said it all. Big moment, this. Just look at this red. Just sneak. Well, yeah, we are going to see it just drop in right at the end. The yellows look nice, don't they? Yeah, it doesn't have to move anything here, Adam. No. Come on, we want to see six all, don't we? Surely. The way the game's yeah. gone. <laughs> There's no favouritism in this commentary mm. box. Apart from the draw. <laughs> Might have got a little bit of a kick there. Yeah, he just gestured, didn't he, by leaving his cue on the yeah. table for another half a second. You have to be quick to pick up on these things from yeah. Sean, but lots of check side on the cue yeah. ball. You made that look like nothing, that shot there. It's almost a swerve shot when you play yeah. that slow, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Especially on the, these, these tables, they're obviously a lot different, they're a lot more reactive. And a lot more slippy, to, so to play that shot can be a little bit daunting. Straight down into the corner. And no need to take too much time over this eight. Is he going to threaten the centre pocket this time? Absolutely yeah. not. No way near the Best break for Chris no, Mellon in this match, and what a time to have it. Feels like he took a little bit of power off it to control it there. Well, I mean, there's no doubt Chris will be aware how many times yeah. he's gone oh. towards that centre pocket. Yeah. So, 
just made a slight adjustment and what a result this is every time these players seem to break yeah. off whether they control the cue ball perfectly or not yeah they're getting magnificent splits it is something i think a lot of players probably think about them when they're on these tables whether you have to hit it that hard to get a good because there i don't think he's hit that as hard as he can do and i mean look at the split Yeah, I definitely sort of agree with that theory. I mean, what so much pull that the guys are playing in such perfect position, uh, yeah, perfect conditions that uh, a break at a hundred percent power isn't needed for most players. Yeah, great example there. You couldn't get a more perfect split for yeah. Chris. Well, you watch Tom Cousins play, and he's still smashing him at a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> that was the key shot. It works, and I think he's okay. Just coming round to have a look at that. Red furthest right sneaks past the yellow, and it was a very quick look, which tells yeah. me he's probably c happy that it does sneak in. Easy work at the minute from both players. The last three, four frames seem to have just flown by. Yeah, I'm just wondering how easy this uh, red to the top right is. It looks like one of them you'd want to be right behind. He had a quick look before. I think we may yeah. see it go in off the near jaw. Yeah. Chris. The good thing is it's only really got to drop it in. Yeah, it shouldn't cause him a problem. Play at a nice pace, I'm sure. Yeah. There you go. Just clip the nature on the way through, but Sean with it all to do, it looks like. He's gonna have the next break in a must win frame. And even if he does manage to take that, he'll be hoping for a chance in the decider. It's the only chance of him winning this match and take booking his place in the semi final. <laughs> exactly. Enough of that, back to the action. <laughs> Has made a ball, but congestion over the left hand side of the table, especially near the breaking area. The breaking early on in this match was questionable from both players, but it's take, taken a marked improvement, and the standard has just continued to rise. Hasn't ma managed to disturb this yellow. And can't. Does he keep going aggressive here? Well, whether it's the right decision or not, that's up to you, Adam. <laughs> uh, what he's going to do is definitely carry on being, <laughs> yeah. keeping, keeping being aggressive. That's for sure. Chris will be sat in his chair, as he always is, with fingers and thumbs touching. Just getting himself ready to pounce because he knows that Sean's got to play a key shot here may have the angle looks okay would love to play it off the middle of these three yellows like to be a little bit straight on it I'm not sure do you feel Adam that if he does play it off the one to middle he can't play it too hard because he needs that backspin to grip yeah that's why I feel like he'd be, he wants to be a little bit straight on it because then and he always feels like he should be on the top one to the middle well he's, he's got it out and uh, does this pass into the right hand corner it does can tell you is this going to drop it is I can tell you that Mark Selby completed victory over Mark Fleming by seven frames to two so the winner of this match will play Mark Selby later on this evening in the semi-final sure to be a magnificent atmosphere outer tables will be closed I believe what time will that be? I will update you with a time hopefully it's to be confirmed it's usually around I think it's around it's, I think Mark's on the first one so around eight o'clock I think you're so hoping that Chris hits it and goes in off that right middle again or goes close to it and actually goes in this time took a lot off that one yeah, really did 
and look at the result. It's a dry yeah, break. Would sure. you believe it? He will go back to his seat thinking, I wish I'd put an extra 20% on yeah. it. There was definitely a decrease it, in power there, Adam. Yeah, and it goes to show you, even one of the best players in the world lost faith in his own break there. Oh, they're brave words. Well, <laughs> it, it's a well, you stick by him, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cut. not the end of the world, though, here for Chris Mellin, because there are problems around the breaking area two yellows and a red together and obviously that eight ball being sandwiched at the bottom of our screens between two yellows especially now he's taken the red balls so one problem red and one big problem eight ball which looks like it's going to be a double if we get that far yeah the red obviously to the top uh, the sort of top left the table I feel like he wants to go into it I'm just wondering if he if he could drop this one in and go into it off the middle and I, I'm just wondering if it leaves if he hits it good if it leaves him the angle on the one to the top right to go into the black looks like he's dealing with that ball now well, I'm not sure. I'd like to think that was an attempt to get on the red yeah. to the right centre, but he hasn't gone far enough. So first little mistake in this break to give Chris Mellin a glimmer of hope. It's a, it's Could play the, that red there is sort of one of them where it was horrible to get onto it to the middle just because of the positional shot you'd have to play off to it, off of it after. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't decide to go into it. He's going to have to come round off a couple of cushions, is he here, at Adam? I, I, I mean, I think the, the double on the plaques now oh. are shot, so I think he's just going to come round the back of this, roll, then roll that into the middle and play the double on the black. This shot for a place in the semi-final, it's all about pace. Has to be perfect, and it looks pretty good. So he's going to get to the eight ball, nice. you feel? Maybe a little bit too thin on it. Just wondering if he's got a screw into the yellow to hold it now for the double. Yeah, he's just a little graze off the yellow there to hold it. So it's a double on this eight ball for a fantastic victory. Into the semi final he goes. He's defeated Chris Mellin in a last frame decider and he will face Mark Selby later on tonight in the semi final of Pro Series. Fantastic, that what a game that was, wasn't it? <laughs> it really was.